if you guys remember, we did the low voltage lighting panel, right? There, my friend, we had a low voltage lighting panel. The low voltage lighting panel was made out of relays. This chapter, Adam, my friend, is really cool because it goes over how do they put the lighting control panel together. I know it's a, we're beyond that point right now. You guys installed, oops, you guys are installed the lighting uh, panel. You circuited the lighting panel in Revit. Now this one just gives you what's inside this lighting panel. What's inside this lighting panel? Morning, Andrew. Okay. Um, so that's low voltage uh, remote control. They call it low voltage remote control. Here's what I would like to go over, guys. Um, they, so this one in particular is for the lighting control panel, a big panel full of relays, big panel full of relays. Um, I'm not going to tell you something that you don't know because of energy saving in the U.S. right now. You have to control your lights with an auto means, some type of auto means, right? So that's when it becomes a uh, lighting control pa panel becomes a big deal. So important, why energy saving? Lighting control panel, energy saving. Um, and in order to achieve energy code, like you guys did calculation with me, right? Come check, did calculation. In order to achieve um, energy code, um, and adhere to energy code, you have to have efficient fixture, efficient ballast, and some means of electronically control these fixtures. Turn them on and off. To do this, you need some type of a lighting control panel. Cool? So that's a big deal. Uh, list the uh, components of low voltage remote control system. Again, this is uh, lighting. This is my lighting. Where's the one? Wait for that one. My lighting control panel. Oh, that's the one you go. Okay, so this is my lighting control panel. What are the components for my lighting control panel that you're going to do, see in a second? Um, and then, Jeff, since we are an EC code book, we're going to talk a little bit about the NEC requirement when it comes to um, the lighting control book, the uh, lighting control panel. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We know what we're doing. Lighting control panel, what's inside it, and what's the, what is the code requirement for it? That's class two circuit, right? Class two circuit, lighting control panel. So that's what you're going to do a couple of things, guys. Very easy, very simple. Um, correct connections for wiring low voltage uh, remote control panel. I know you guys are designers, you're not going to be wiring, but if you are to wire them, the way they do these low voltage switches and the way they wire them, it's really interesting because you're dealing with 24 volt and they use um, a lot of, like we said, they use um, a six, number 16 and number 18, two pairs, two twisted pairs. Um, and they use a comment, you'll see how they use that comment, and you have to separate them from the high voltage. That's what the whole wiring system is going to see. You can see the, the really the nice couple of diagrams, it's really cool. Um, so if you keep going on that one, my friends, here's the first thing you need to do. Uh, this is just a couple of things, energy saving. To accomplish the energy saving, you have to have some means of, in order to get energy saving, uh, we talked yesterday, it was a couple of days before, you have to have an efficient clamp, that's number one, an efficient ballast, that number two, right? That's by default, by efficient clamp, efficient ballast, but that by itself, there is not enough. You need to find a means of uh, automatically control the light when you don't need it, or dim it, right? So that's where it becomes uh, focusing on how to turn the luminaires on and off. So that's the control. That's why this chapter is a big deal. We, you guys know, we specify the electronic, very efficient electronic ballast. We specify T8 or T5 or LEDs, which is very efficient. Then we're done with the efficient fixtures and lamps. Now we need to control these fixtures and lamps to make them work efficiently, right? How do you make them work efficiently, Andrew, my friend? You do an on-off, an auto on-off, occupancy sensor, timer, um, day harvest, harvesting sensors, so that's what this chapter is all about. Not about the lamp, about the actual control. Thumbs up, chat. We know that. So that's it. And why do we care? Save energy. <clears throat> so what does a low voltage control system, again, lighting control panel, big name for low voltage remote control system, 24 volt. That's what a low voltage can be, 24 volt. Um, so what do you need? What, what does it do for you? A couple of things, guys. Provide control for multiple location. I can make a switch. If you go to uh, and, uh, certain locations, I can make one single low voltage 24 switch turn every single light at Dunwoody. How can you do this one with high voltage switches? There in the, and 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 Jeff, you guys are journeymen. Can you make 
a, a 20 amp circuit breaker, a 20 amp uh, or a 20 amp snap switch. Turn every single light at Dunwoody by itself, no control, on an every single light at Dunwoody. Oh, yeah, no control. You can do it as a breaker. So you, uh, how are you going to turn all these breakers off? Uh, you can do it like, you know, input breakers have integrated. Shunt trip. Yeah, so, so you got into control. The only way you can turn every single light, sweep the light at night, like you guys did with the project that we have, sweep the light at night. Every single light is going to go off, like you guys did with me with the relay schedule. The only way you can do it is if you have a lighting control panel where you can wire it with low voltage switches and you program it that at 9 o'clock at night, turn every single relay off. Bam, 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 shut these relays. So that's what they're talking about. Control multiple locations they can do. Um, auto time control. Auto timing, certain time hands. I am, uh, you can also do handheld control programming. Yeah, occupation sensor. You guys are familiar with occupation sensor. Um, Unoccupation sensors like snap switches can go with them too. Photo cells <clears throat> and interface with control for security. So if somebody a thug like your friend Chad tries to break into this window, can I reach that window? And uh, you know the minute that you try to break into this window, the se the security sensor send a signal to the fire to the to the lighting control panel and turn all the lights on this side on to scare the people. So there's a lot of interface guys and a lot of programming they can do with it. <clears throat> um, now when it comes to, to these systems, they're, they're, they use relays. You guys familiar with the relays. Relays, right? The relays can be electromechanical, dumber than a rock coil. You energize it, it shuts a couple of contacts. That's what a, that's a relay is. Or it could be a solid state electronics. Solid state electronics, guys, they use transistor, special type of transistor, by activating um, uh, two parts, it shunts, it closes electronically and, and, and activate the circuit. So there is no moving objects in it. Are you guys familiar with, did you do, I don't think you, did you, when you, with us, did you guys do electronic relays with us? or just most of the stuff that we have in our lab is electromechanical relays. There is a coil and energy as a coil. Electronic relays don't have a coil. You have a, you get a signal and they close electronically, they close this sw electronic switch. You, they use uh, transistors um, to act as a contact. Anyway, so that's, you can use any of these to get you the closing, to get you the closing mechanism. Notorious, the famous PLC is right here. These are, they use a lot of electronic relays with them. Okay, remote control relays. So the, the heart of the lighting control panel is a relay, guys. Something called a relay. That's the heart of the relay, the control panel. That's, um, that's the liaison between the power system and the low voltage system. You're gonna see in a second. Low voltage remote system is really operated these relays can be um, electronic relays, or they can be electromagnetic, coil, energized, shot, or they can be get a signal, close the contact, make the transistor close. Um, so relay is controlled for low voltage switching system, internal control of power. So what you do is you bring a signal, 20 volt amp signal to the coil, energize the coil, bam, shut the contacts, and the light is on. Um, that signal can be from Chad moving and pushing a button, or it could be programmed in the controller to send you a signal. You're going to see in a second. Um, you can mount, available in two mounting, uh, mount through the uh, knockout opening or plug-in relays. So you can put these relays, guys, uh, a square box, knockout for a square box, block, put your relay right there, attach it to uh, it inside these knockout, and then bring the hot and... Uh, um, in one side and the low voltage on the other side and you get yourself a relay sitting right above this panel. They call these um, power pack. They call it power pack. So the relays, you can group them all in one, call them lighting control panel, or you can separate them and put one right above Kerry's head to control that light right above the ceiling and that's, they call it power pack. And I know when, when there's an associate where here, they're moving away from this. This is so the old technology now. There's the M light. The M light is, guys, these, all these lights are smart network light. They get a power circuit directly to them and a controller right next to them that you can talk to that light, dim that light, or talk to it directly. And instead of putting all these lights on a relay, turning on and off, I can send a signal directly to the light and talk directly to that particular fixture, if that makes sense. So the, but the old ways is the relays. <clears throat> Yeah, 
the, the, talking to the light. It's, it's the same thing as, as talking to your fridge and talking to your microwave, uh, using your, mi your smartphone right now to turn my microwave on and off. The technology is there. How? I mean, do you really? <laughs> yeah. Do you see the people? I can see myself, um, you know, getting a signal from my house or somebody breaking into my house. The technology is there right now. Yeah, but that's a little bit different. Yeah. But do I really want to go put my food uh, there and see at 2 o'clock, 2.30 when I leave, start? You know, the technology is there, though. How far you're going to go is how, uh, how much you need it. But I can see the lights, though, in a commercial building, high-profile customers like 3M, uh, guys like uh, Mayo Clinic, they want to be environmentally friendly, they have the money. I can see those guys uh, have network lights like these where they can talk directly to them. As a matter of fact, when we went to the Gophers, uh, did you guys go to the Gophers Stadium? The Gophers Stadium, um, at the, um, we toured the Gopher, was done for Parson Lecture a couple of years ago. The fixtures there are network fixtures, the one in the, in the, um, in the stadium. And they can see this, they are monitored from a location, my understanding, in Iowa. And they can give data, real data, directly to the monitoring system in Iowa, and they can tell when they're going to break, uh, what the life expectancy and the balance and the whole thing. So they can uh, they can um, they can do preventative maintenance on them because they're networked. So the technology is there, but you can understand why in a stadium you don't want the light to go off, just you know, burn on them. Okay, switching. So. When, you, when it comes to switching, guys, you, have, you can have a um, single pole, you can have double pole, momentary con all of them are momentary contact, uh, side-on terminal for connections, um, <clears throat> slide-on terminals, uh, available in single, two, four, or eight switches combination. Here's the fun thing about these. I can have a box like this, um, and, and inside that box, I can fit a tiny little switches like this, guys, eight, um, low voltage, these are 8 cam. Now they are they're 8. Here's my um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep. It, it switches right into a box, a single gang box. Single gang box, you can fit 8 switches, single gang box. Um, so, because they're crammed all together. And you know how they wire them, Jeff? They wire them very easy. Here's the single. But they, when they bring the wire, they bring a common wire. Look what the common wire goes to all of them. The common wire goes to all of them, and then they bring, and these are number number 16 wires. That's the common, and then from here, they bring um, the other wires, all the other wires. You know, another wire that comes um, from each one of them. The common is the same, and another wire. Can you see that? One common, and the other wire is just going to each lighting fixture. You can push the button. And this will turn this light, so each one of them will turn a different light. But they have a common wire that's coming to it. So you have two wires, two wires. See how cool is that? You can achieve six, uh, eight, eight switches. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, five. These are five. Imagine eight of these in a single gang box. So it, it, that's what the advantage of having low voltage. I'm not going to tell you something that you don't know. You can have pilot switches um, for these. Uh, you can have lit toggle so people can see it, or if uh, if you tr don't trust people like Adam, for example, you can key these switches. My Adam, not you, Adam. Uh, you can key them <clears throat> so people can't mess around with hallways and so forth. So the possibility is endless when it comes to these. Here's my favorite. Um, if you guys, if you look at this one, this is. One of the most important things about how a lighting, low voltage lighting control system works. So you brought, can you guys see that we're bringing right in here, I don't know if we're showing, um, there's something, a wire here missing. Yeah, there is a wire here. That wire is, uh, I'm going to grab that wire right in here. This wire is coming right in here, okay? Okay, so can you guys see that? Yep, yep Chad, yeah, okay. So can you guys see, th so this is the low voltage switch, three wires coming to the low voltage switch. This is your relay and this is your light. So I have my um, my 50, my uh, 20 amp circuit and this is circuit number one, circuit number one feeding this light. And oh, by the way, you can go and get another light here and you can go get another light here and multiple lights. Cool. Here's your relay. Everybody can see the relay. So this side, 
is the high voltage. This side is <coughs> low voltage. This side here is your high voltage side, right? 120. So when you have relay like these guys, you have the relay has two coils in it. They split the coil from the middle. And when they energize, when you push momentarily this button here, you close at one set, one part of the coil, and this contact will close. Okay? Close. Now the light is on. Now what happened when the light is on if we lose the power? Excel, we lost power. It's torn, and Excel, uh, we lost Excel. When Excel comes back, the light will turn on by itself. It's already on. Now when you want to turn it off, you close another set of contacts here, and it will energize another coil, and it pulls them apart. Does that make, that's, does that make sense, guys? Because you don't use one coil, because if you use one coil, if I use one coil like uh, magnetic starters in this area, if I use the one coil, when I lose power, the equipment will turn up and stay up until I go push the button again. For lights, they don't want this to happen, right? When you turn the switch on, energize one part of the uh, coil, close the contact, Okay, turn another set, push the button off, uh, uh, off, energize another set of coil, pull them apart. Okay, so there's a coil that push them together, close them, and another coil that pull them apart. Does that make sense? Very, very important. Why do they do it this way for uh, lights? Because if the light, my light is on right now, right? I lost the power. And for five seconds, so 10 seconds. Now when the power comes back, the light stays on because the switch is still on. That's what they want to maintain. Cool? If the switch was off, the light will be off when it comes back. Any question guys about this? So to achieve this system, they use um, three conductors, number 16 or 18, to achieve that system. One of them is common, and the rest of them, the one for on, one for off. One for on, one for off. Any questions, any concerns about that? So you're energizing a couple of coils here. You'll see the inside of it, how it's really cool. Um, master control, um, up to eight low voltage switches can be located in the same area. Um, so that you can do a lot of things, guys, with them. You can have one one uh, switch <clears throat> can control a lot of things. If you have um, a square box like this, you can put tons of these uh, controls on them. So I'm going to show you the master control that they use in a second here. Here's your master control. These are, this is the low voltage control system panel for the whole um, project that we have. Look how easy that is. Your start point is with the juice, the juice. That's where you, um, Aaron, remember when I told you, have you circuited Aaron, the lighting control panel? You said, no, Chad, we're gonna go circuit it. That's what you did. You went here and you gave a 20 amp circuit to this transformer. That's what you did. You give it a juice to juice it, right? 20 amp circuit. Then that transformer will turn it into 24 volt. Now I'm using only 24 volt for all of us. Let me just show you guys one little thing common. Um, if you can see this wire, look at this wire. This is the common wire coming for all these relays. All these relays are common wire. Can you guys see that? That's your common between all these. Remember we talked about the common, common wire between all these relays. Done. Here's my common wire. Then, the second one, if I take this switch right here on off, then I have one switch to turn that on, and another, uh, let me use read here, and then another one to turn it off. Now, what I showed right now, I showed basically three wires, right? One, to, one is coming, and the other one to turn, to turn that light on and off in this uh, sign show window, right? Sign show window. Then what they do is they use these diodes guys to control the flow of energy. By using the diodes, they make the current go one way but not the other way. And then they can energy, they can make one switch, control everything. Like here's a master, I think that one in the middle is a master switch system. Eight switches combination. Um, so these switches right here, they can turn everything based on the wiring that they use based on the way I'm going to use. So each one of these switches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are just a switch for one area. That's it. On, off, on, off. 
These eight switches are master switches. You push any one of them, you turn everything on or you can turn everything off based on the wiring that they do. Why do they have these diodes, guys? You can see these diodes that they have, this particular branch here. This one to get you the master, I hope you can see the master here, going and energizing this fixture. Can you see that? The master, let me just draw one little thing here and then I'll let you. If you take this master, I will go energize this fixture from this master now. It's going this way, bam, and put some wire here. And the same thing from this master, I'm going to go right here and energize this. Now look at this fixture. This fixture has two ways of energizing it, either locally from this switch or master switch sitting next to the uh, secretary that you can push that switch and turn this light on and off. So that's where, where, where uh, the superiority of low voltage system guys becomes big deal. And really, yes sir. You hit that master, you're gonna turn both those, both LN and on, right? right? Yes, yes, because the current is, I'm just showing only one. The current is gonna continue here and turn this on, right? Right, and what else? So in this case, you're gonna turn these two together at the same time, absolutely. Because wherever, you, the, you guys, you understand that the, when you have a diode like this, the current will go this way but not the other way. It doesn't go this way, right? So it allows the current to go one direction, not the other. That's what the diode is. <coughs> so they use sets of diodes to control that 24 volt, right? They're connecting everything together, but they, they want the energy to go this way, not the other way, right? So if I am pushing, they don't want that, that if I push this, this uh, switch, I don't want the voltage to come and energize this one too. So that's why the current can't go this way down, but it can go up. Does it make sense, guys, <coughs> without complicating it more? Um, so these are your master switches right here. Okay, I don't want to, I want to emphasize those. Also for the other side of the switch, you bring it to, you bring a common to all the switches. Remember that switches also have to have a common coming to all of them. Can you guys see that switch coming? All coming, one, one conductor will be coming for all the switches. One conductor will be coming for all the relays. So you can see these two coming, and then the rest of them, the other two, can be used to do the control. Any comments, any questions? In this system, guys, I can control uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas. Eight. 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 Okay, eight, um, and yep, K here. <laughs> eight individually or in sets of groups. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad, that we understand how that put together? It's all wires and, and, and concepts. That's what's inside the control panel that you guys sized with me. The cheapest, easiest way to do it. These relays carry my friend, the app, these, remember how you guys named your relays, really one, two, three, with me? That's what you're naming. Instead of naming them, they give them alphabets. So this will be your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 relays. When I told you guys to have a relay schedule, right? And I said, could you please have your relay schedule? That's what you were showing, a relay that I need to control. Cool? The, the only thing that's not shown here, the only thing that's not shown here, guys, it might be confusing to you. I want to show that uh, a room like this have a couple of lights inside it, and I'm going to power it. So I now I bring a separate 20 amp circuit. Can you guys see that? And my 20 amp circuit, I bring the 20 amp circuit to this side. Can you guys see it? To this side of the fuse of the relay number one. And from here, I'm going to go and bam, 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 feed these. And in order for the power to flow, what else do you need to make the power flow? Neutral. So you come with your neutral here, and you bring your neutral to here. One, two, three, four. Done. That's how the system is put together. You go now, you push this button, you close the contacts, this, these lights in this room will go on. The merchandise area. Any comments, any questions, guys? Really cool system to know. Any comments, any questions? 
that's how the really panel and that's how Chad was yelling at you when you say please really schedule really schedule and you guys put the really schedule then for your relay schedule if you guys remember um, you had your relay so that will be relay number one relay number one and circuit circuit number let's just say this is circuit number two circuit number two and area the area that's going to control it is merchandise here and the means of control is low voltage switch does that make sense if you tell me this i'm good does that make sense the relay schedule to what they're doing here i know you guys are not electricians but the more you know about the whole electrical system the better you'll be period there is a um the homework that you guys have has a has a wiring like this they ask you to wire it i strongly encourage you when you wire it, keep two things in mind. Number one, you need a common conductor for all the switches, and you need a common conductor for all the, the relays. That's all. One common for the switches. Can you guys see? And the common, the funny thing is the common for the relay is uh, you got your hot here. Um, right, see how that common between all the relays, that common. And then the switches, the other side of the transformer goes to the switches as a common. And then you take two conductors between the relays and the switch. That's all that you're doing. Any comments, any questions, my friends? So that's your lighting control system. Um, we talked about the relays. The relays are there. Okay, here's a simpler form, guys. This is very simple form. Um, you have relay one, relay two. And these are, um, sub this is the supply. Here's the 20 amp circuit, here's the load, and here's the light going on, and here's the neutral coming. So uh, here's my phase A and a neutral going this way to this light. So can you guys see, I want everybody to tell me, if I push this one on, I turn this fixture, the fixture shows, uh, it turns on, um, or I can, this is the master, the bottom one is master, or I can turn this one individually, or I can use the master switch to turn both of them on and off. Let's, let me show you the master switch, because master switch is, is uh, so if I push this one on, can you guys see where the current, where is the current is going to go? So I'm now energizing this, I'm going all the way to here, and I put the voltage here, <clears throat> and also I put the voltage here, and I have my return, <clears throat> my return is coming already from here and here, gentlemen, I have energized two relays, right? I energize two relays. Can you guys see that? Because the diodes allow the current to go one way but the other, not the other. The current can go this way but not the other way. That's why these little diodes, they're using them to control the flow of energy. Those are your cups sitting there. Yeah, you can go one way street. Like one way street. Current can go one way street in these diodes. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand how they're using it. The only time you need a diode is if you want one switch to control multiple lights. If you don't put a diode, what happens if you don't put a diode here, guys? Every time you energize this, this switch controls also this. You start the current starts going all over. Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's as easy as your control system. Um, now, in terms of wiring, the code consider these class two wires, class number two wiring class number two wires you guys can use typically 16 18 um 20 not a whole lot a w g now can i use number 14 yep we'll be over killing a little bit so you can use them
soon as you open the door, just like gives a big rumble. So we good. Okay, so the conductors that we use guys is uh, is uh, um, 16, 18, and 20. Article 725 take care of you. The only thing I want to say, Kerry, about Article two, uh, 725, it tells you very simple things. Could you please separate these wires from the power and lighting and equipment? Everybody can give me a thumbs up, Chad, you fully understand. That's it. And if you're putting them in a ceiling like this, a plenum ceiling. Could you please make the plenum rated cable, meaning if there's a fire, they don't contribute to the spread of fire or to the smoke? That's what this uh, what this is uh, all about. So that's <clears throat> that's what this arc is all about. Um, when with the wiring method, guys, they always class two circuits start with a class two um, XFR transformer. When you start with a 24 volt transformer that you looked at, that has to be labeled as a class two transformer. And when they label class two transformer, they have some type of um, either a fuse or cell or self protection, either a fuse or self protection on the transformer. So long story short, guys, when you when you have that 100 uh, 1000 volt amp transformer that you're feeding, the way they design it, if you're to overload it to that little transformer, either it has self-control it's designed that when you overload it you lower the voltage and it doesn't and it it, it, it protects itself by lowering the voltage or <clears throat> and then tripping the equipment or you have to have a fuse so all what we care darren is when you wire this security system when you buy the panel the panel itself will have a class 2 transformer inside it why they call it class two because it's self-protected or have a fuse that protects it so it protects itself from overloading because you can see that 24 volt did you see any fuse on that 24 volt there is no fuse on the 24 volt so how are you going to protect it from overloading the, the, either fuse on the primary of the transformer or you can have the transformer designed to be self-protected okay so that's what they're saying about this um non-resetting self-protected or a link fuse or externally mounted and so forth conductors we talked about it's a class two conduct circuits that we that we use you cannot put them in the same uh, uh, conduit or box with everything else guys you can use from the gauge 20 and larger you start like we said um typically they are multi-conductor cables that you can use in pairs um so this is just talks about the panels that we have. You're going to see a little, a little bit about the panel. The panel has two sections. One is called high voltage. One is called low voltage. The high voltage is 120 or 277. The low voltage is 24 volt. By code, you have to separate them with the barrier. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know how to separate them with the barrier. So that's the panel um, that you have to see. Here's, I should have waited. Here's the typical lighting control panel, guys. If I can have your attention for one second. Can you guys see the high voltage side of the relay is right here? Here's my hot coming into the relay, out of the relay, into my light. This is my light, okay? Same thing, here's another light here. 
um, uh, this is, no, this is my switch, and this side is my switch. It's coming through the terminals of my switch. Um, so let's just say my switch terminal here. This is coming through the terminal of my switch. Can you guys see that? The low voltage, high voltage. Can I have thumbs up, gentlemen? Low voltage, high voltage. Low voltage sections, high voltage sections. The common conductor and the on and the off. The on and the off. This panel is attached directly to the, to the, um, this is more your lighting, lighting panel. This is your um, lighting control panel. Now, Jeff, either you attach them like this or you nibble them. You put a little nibble between them, space them like, say, six inches, and put a nibble between them and pull all your conductors. Can you guys see that all the conductors are being pulled in and out? That's how they do it. In our case, because we put them slightly apart, you might have to put 18 inches or 20 inches or maybe 24 inches. Can't do it. Uh, for, uh, do you want to be 24 or less? Anybody knows why you're 24 or less? If you put more than 24, what do you need to do, Darren? Uh, D rate the conductors. That was going to be your master exam. You've got to remember that. If you put, if you put, uh, if that conduit here is more than 24 inches, then you're going to start the rating. And then you're going to do a lot of troubles. So that's why you're going to keep it 24 inches or less. If you put 24 inches or less, then you can have close to 50 conductors, hot and neutral going on, and you don't have to do it. Make sense? That's why they have to be closer. Yes, sir? Yeah. You can't stretch. It's an auction here, man. Okay, so that's basically what um, what this is, guys. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures, and that's about it. Um, I hope it just gives you, maybe it just gives you an idea of how the system is put together. Now, um, if you graduate from Dunwoody, not knowing how a low-voltage switch works, uh, interface together, you might have to ask your friend, for, Chad, for a, a refund. Cool? Everybody understand how the, how the common, I, I always emphasize one thing, guys. You see that common here? I'm just going to highlight it. These are, you have one common conductor going to the relay, one common conductor going to the switches, all the switches, and then you have two conductors going between the switch and the relay. Very easy. So you see how to remember it, guys? One common conductor going to all the relays from one side of the transformer, right? And the other one going to the switch from the other side of the transformer, and, the, and then two conductors between the two, okay? So that's your uh, circuit. Uh, here's how the relay system works, guys. Um, you can energize. This is really cool. So when I want to put the system in on, uh, Andrew, my friend, I energize this set, and it pushes the contacts to shut. When I want to de-energize, uh, turn the light off, I have to energize this set, and that will pull them apart. Can you guys see that? These are electrically, mechanically maintained, electrically actuated, mechanically maintained. You push them and they stay on, right? Because they have a spring on them to hold them. And you have to, to energize the coil again to pull them. By doing it this way, guys, they are guaranteed that when if you lose power, the light will stay in the same condition that you left them. If they were on, they will stay on. If they are off, they will be off. That's the only reason why they do it this way. That's smarter than Chad. This is a switch, always three wires coming to it on off. We talked about this baby. I can't emphasize, guys, the, con the master control. Now, um, who is uh, carrying my friend? The diodes are there for one reason. They allow the current to go this way, but they do not allow the current to go the other way. That's it. So they control the flow of the 24 volt. By controlling the flow of the 24 volt, guys, they can control the... Um, make master switch control circuit lines, but not the other. You know? Now, you can do this with a PLC right now. Much easier and much faster than that, though. So this is one way of relays. Here's your diodes. You guys, uh, I don't know how much. Did you take diodes with us? I know you guys probably. Did you take any diodes? You did? Yeah, because we didn't do, we didn't, you didn't do, do a whole lot of electronics with us. The diodes, they act like a, a one-way switch. You know, there is a, I don't want to make it a diode here. There are three types of material, guys. There's the conductors, beautiful. These are your wires. 
there's the insulation, beautiful. We have the insulation, the insulatory wires, and there's one in between, uh, semiconductors. The semiconductors, their application is electronics. Sometimes they conduct, sometimes they don't. Those are the moody, moody ones. They use them to generate transistors and diodes. So that diode can go one way, um, can give you when the signal is up, it allows you to go. When the signal goes down, it shuts it, it kills it. So the outcome here, if you put a signal this way, the outcome will be something like this. Okay? It shuts in one direction, not the other. Okay, so who cares? For us, here's who cares. When you have a junction like this, can you guys see now, I guarantee that my energy is going to be going this way from here, or my energy is going this way. This is the direction where the current is going. I will never have a direction where it's going that way. Can you guys see that? So they control, they control the power, the flow of power. Am I the only one excited here? Control the flow of power. Okay, so that's, um, we talked about this one, guys, using a, one master with two switches. Did you guys work on low voltage, Darren, anybody? Yeah. So it's really not, you did? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. So it's really not hard. I mean, if you you have to understand the diodes, why the diodes are there, that's all. Control the flow of, of, of current. Okay, the last thing, my friend, is the code require you, this is class two, oops, not this. This is a class two circuit. Um, class two circuit, can you get see these? Yeah, you can't put them in the same box, you have to separate them. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that. Separation between the class two circuit and power circuit. That's it. And we talked about separation in a box. Can you guys see this big barrier between the two of them? And here's uh, your diodes, the high voltage section, the low voltage section of your diode, how it looks like. Here's your switches, free terminal of your switch. Jeff, here's your uh, on off switches, eight of them. Are they eight or seven? One, two, yeah, eight. Transformers, here's your, I think this is a, is this a controller or the transformer? Remote control switching. Looks like switching jumper, operating. In fact, there's a transformer. Here's your transformer class two. I don't know if you can see what it says class two transformer somewhere here. <clears throat> and the last thing, my friends, is uh, for you um, to exercise. Um, oops, go here. We have this exercise for you, and please do it. This is how do you wire? <clears throat> Um, they want you, look at this, this is really cool, you have transformer, you have switches, you have the relay, uh, switches, relays, transformer, they want switch number one to control A, switch number one to control this, that's a piece of cake, right? You just wire, bring one, let me just wire the first one because it's a piece of cake. The first one, you take one side here, These are, first do the comic, and the other side here, and then chat the travelers, grab traveler and traveler. They're done. Right? That one comment, right? You always take one comment. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, all these are going to be common here. So these are, you know, all comments are going to be together. And the same thing for all these comments, all these comments are going to be together. The only thing you need to do now is put the diodes in the right location so it, it, it controls the flow. Okay, so that's a start point for you. Feel free to pass around with them, guys, and uh, and look at the ones that they have. The only thing, really, this is start point is first taking the commons and, and shooting two conductors between the two. Done. Travelers and two commons. Huh? Make <laughs> any comments? Any questions? Okay, that's all we have for you. I'll uh, give you five minutes, and I'm going to review quick for the test, and then we're done for the day. Uh, Lecture-wise, anyway. I'm going to number from electronics by other